amount of just experience in the booth as well. So probably giving some good tips here to Deer. Stork is such a great mind to have on your side. Uh, being able to just go in that booth and talk to him about PvP, being able to watch that whole game and tell him everything. Give him any advice that he can. Would love to have him in the booth talking to me if I were in this situation. Yeah. A very even game, though. Very close. And uh, basically, till the very end there, almost dead even until patients started to pull ahead. All right, guys. Let's go into game number two. It's going to be on Deadwing. Big map. That it is. And Deer needs to stay focused right now. Not lose his cool. Let's see if he can tie it up. Or his patient's going to take a 2-0 lead. Down here in the bottom right in the red, he's up 1-0 so far from Dead Pixels. It is Patience. There he is. For a young player. His opponent spawned Cross on this long rush distance. It's Deer. And... Taking that loss, Maybe a bit frustrating. Patience just outplaying him there a little bit, and uh, you know he—they both made some weird mistakes. I think nerves are running yeah. high. The the stalker miss rally is something that happens to everybody. Every single player who's play who plays Pro has had this happen to a Claus, has had this happen to a stalker. We all have. Happens to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, the mothership core, um, you know, it's okay to time warp and and target down pros, but you got to leave eventually because the stalker is going to come out. Or at least if you're going to stay there, at least be just targeting the probes down and getting as many kills as possible. Um, go for that kind of thing. I'm glad you mentioned, you know, how nerves can definitely come into this because we were seeing how Deer, you know, he loses the first game. He looks slightly nervous, but he's got Stork behind him, you know, at his back. He's got a bit more experience with his patience. He's out of here alone. He yeah. doesn't have any coaches to come into the booth and talk to him. And he's young, like you mentioned as well. And if he starts to, uh, you know, lose his grip on this series, it is a long series. It's a five-game series. If he goes down a couple of games, you know, he could lose some of that mentality that he's got going for him. That's a great point. That's why I stressed time and time again that even though Gumiho is on a foreign team, he has Choya support, he has the MVP house, you know, he's got that support. He's on a pro league team as well. But Patience, man, he has seen a lot. And he's seen a lot of foreign events. He's traveled the world. I don't think he'll get shaken up, but look at this proxy versus proxy. What's it going to be? In nearly the same spot. One's up there on the high ground, one's down here at the low ground behind that natural. Well, it's going to be either Stargate or DT's uh, hidden. I feel like we might see both. Um, let's just wait and see, because, I mean, this is, a, this is literally a guessing game that we have to play as to the viewers. No one can predict exactly. I mean, it seems like both locations are solid for DTs, considering that they're not really that close to their opponent's bases. Mm -hmm. um, but that might be just because they don't want the Stargates to be scouted. Uh, cores are finishing. Let's find out. A ton of gas for both players saved up. Over 200. Twilight and Mothership Core and Warp Gate Research. <laughs> <laughs> and then a Probably Stargate. Into Twilight. Oh, no, into a Twilight. Yeah, yeah I thought he was yeah. waiting. And look at this. Deer, he's going to scout this base, actually. But he doesn't scout to the top. The Korean fangirls are screaming, go up, go up, but he's not going up, man. <laughs> I heard them down there yelling at him to go up, but he's not going to go up. Can't hear you, man. We, we were talking about hear. those sound blockers. You can't hear anything. If the girl was standing behind him screaming, go up, go up, he wouldn't hear it, man. Those Almost sound blockers are really man. strong. <laughs> Dark Shrine for patience. And Deer looks to be doing the same. Oh, man. Yep, there it is. It's going to be slightly later. Who plays safe now? Who makes a robo and who makes sentries? Sentry is basically mandatory if you're going to do this build, if you're not going to make a robo. If you don't make a robo and you proxy a dark shrine and you don't make sentries to defend your ramp, you're asking to lose. Oh, my God. Is this probe just going to sneak by here and not get scouted? Oh, okay. He sees it. But now he knows something is up. At least he didn't see the, the pylon. If he saw the pylon, he'd be like, all right, I am going to make, like, cannons. <laughs> <laughs> Blink on the way as well here for Deer. Yeah. This probe gets denied. Sees absolutely nothing. Robo goes up for patience. He's playing safer. 
Does it mean that Deer's not going to do that? It's just a lot harder for him to afford it, getting Blink, Dark Shrine, and a Robo. Pretty expensive. Not going to be able to make a lot of DTs, not going to be able to make a whole lot of anything. Not going to have a very strong Blink Stalker force. Oh, no. This Dark Shrine is about to finish as well. There's still no detection here for Deer, and that Pylon is so close as well. All he's got to do is warp in some DTs and walk into the main base. Will this scout? Will this scout, though? It might be too late anyways. Okay, Deer's warping in a sentry here. That could be his one last line of defense. I think he knows. Well, he better force field perfectly. Is he looking? He is looking. And he will force field. He traps his stalker out, though. Good micro to pull the stalker away immediately. That oh robo is in a bad spot. It's in a bad spot. Okay, he's going to have to sentry use another force field. But how many can he keep warping in? It's going to eventually cost him here. He's going to have to warp in a lot of sentries here. Observer is out. How many kills will this DT get? The answer is two. Another force field warped in here. He's actually getting ready to make a tight wall with pylons. That's how desperate he is right now. Because he needs a lot of time. He needs a lot of time. Deer was so close to losing this game, actually. If those DTs got in, man. All right, pylon is canceled as the DTs come over here to harass the Nexus. Had he been killing this Nexus the whole time, actually, he would have killed it for sure. And he, he's going to have to force seal the Nexus to save it. I don't think he can save this. Another DT comes. Yeah, he's going to have to cancel this. Looks like it. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's going to have to be canceled. So even though he wasn't able to get into the main base, he forced enough of a reaction to get ahead in his own way because he's got his own Nexus about halfway done. So he's getting slightly ahead here. Well... I think it's a little bit more than slightly ahead, and I'll tell you why. Because the Nexus is the most important part, which is the one that you mentioned, and that in itself mm -hmm. is only slightly ahead. But he made a ton of pylons, even canceled one, and made how many sentries did he make in total? I think it was four. Four. One of them died, I believe. So he made a ton of sentries. That's a ton of gas spent, which means it's harder to make war or uh, not war prism. That's in the war prism right there. But harder to make immortals. Harder to get your additional upgrades later. It's a really bad spot to be in. You don't want to make sentries if you can avoid it. You know, more than the one that you need to be safe. And then after that, you want to have your Observer out, and you're just like, okay, that's all I needed to do. So I, I find Patience to be massively ahead in every way. Look at how much more gas he has now. Look at how well he's able to spend his resources. And I True. don't know what this, this Stargate's going to do for him. He, he's also got to defend this here, Deer does, because we do have that War Prison carrying just one DT. He knows he can save two a little bit later to just make an Archon. Uh, you know, another part of this is that he's getting ahead by keeping two of those and having that Archon, so... She's the two stalkers here and uh, knows that deer is paying attention. So he's not even going to lose the warp prism or that uh, third DT either. Maybe just, you know, park it maybe at a third base location, just be annoying, that kind of thing. What do you think about this Oracle? I don't think it's going to get very much damage done. It's making Phoenixes afterwards, so he's I mean, definitely taking risks. And when you're behind, you got to do that. I, I feel like that's mainly why he's doing this. It's also very unexpected. Because, you know, an Oracle this late in the game, you know, after you've gone through Twilight Council, Dark Shrine, Robo, and now you're making a Stargate and an Oracle, it's a big commitment. It's something that Patience is not going to expect. Yeah. It's absolutely going to come as a surprise. And it's been hidden so far. Uh, and at home, he's got nothing to defend, actually. There's a cannon on the way, but it's not ready yet. Well, let's see how quickly he can react. He also doesn't have Blink, mind you. Uh, an upgrade that, of course, was cancelled earlier on for his opponent. A lot of probe kills. It's definitely being worth it already here. There's that Nexus Cannon. Was it still was it worth it enough, though? Uh, he still has the utility of making Phoenixes. I don't know. But again, Phoenixes in low number is not really going to be the best thing. When he, only he only made one and stopped making it after that. So, I guess that I mean, Phoenix is just going to be for Warp Prism defense. You know? Yeah. Well, Robo Bay on the way here for Deer. Yeah, so he's going to Colossi. Something that Patience has skipped altogether with his massive lead in upgrades, by the way, on his Forge with all the extra gas from not making sentries. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Also got that charge. Yep, charge as well as the Temple Archives to make Archons uh, cost efficiently. Yeah. To make that Zealot Archon mix, I guess I should say, cost efficiently, because DTs... Uh, can make Archons too, but just get them out. It's like a better splitting of your resources. Uh, with the way this matchup works, that's how you want to make them. And a faster third base comes up for Deer. 
Let's see if Patience decides to just take his own third because he could do that basically for free. Um, but he's also in a good position to attack with plus two and Archons and a big attack timing. And he's making five gates, so it looks like he's already answered my question before he can even finish yeah. it. I think he realizes how far ahead he is, you know, just seeing everything that Deer had to do and then seeing the Oracle, he's like, there's no way you can actually have a big standing army. There's actually no way. Like, if you just add up the resources from what he's seen. Nice feedback there to finish that Oracle off. And on top of what you just said, he also knows there's a third base. He's like, you made what? How much <laughs> gas did you spend? You think you can hold a third base? Are you crazy? Well, he's what got did Sork tell you, man? Because uh, two Colossi with not a lot of support. Two Colossi with only five Zealots. Yeah. If it was three Colossi, there is a third one on the way here. Yeah. Could he, be out. He's getting his own charge. He, he is We'll have that defensive charge. stance here at that Nexus here. Could If he could snipe the one Observer of Patience, too, he doesn't know that. But if he snipes, that DTs could, could work out nicely for him. All right, Immortal Drop could draw some of this army back while he attacks the third. Let's see how he, how he executes this. Pulling this army away. And Immortal Drop still not used. He might actually just try to use this to snipe the Colossi because he knows it's a weak Colossus count and that's the backbone of his army. Yeah, I think he may be right here. Phoenix does scout it. And he almost loses a uh, Archon in the mix. I almost said Artosis. He almost, lose, almost loses an Artosis in the mix. <laughs> But I don't, don't want to lose your Artosis. <laughs> Never want to lose your Artosis. Very important person. Um, he does get his own third base. So we thought, you know, maybe he would just go for a bit of an attack here. But besides, after seeing the army of deer, he's like, nah, I, I can't really attack that. What it he's going to do instead is go into Fleet Beacon Tech. And try to counter those Colossi with yeah. some uh, Tempest here. He needs a lot of time to get the Tempest out. So he needs to keep, you know, attacking, keep poking. That's why this Warp Prism drop of Immortals can be quite nice. But I don't know, man. He's got himself in an awkward spot here. And this time, Deer is going to be careful with how he engages this. Because this is the same thing that happened last time. He got patient into an awkward spot, and then he just kind of attacked into an unfavorable position. But this time, his army is much bigger. He forces a recall, even. Kills Ooh, an Archon. Nice. And now, Patience is like, oh, god, I, I don't have enough time to get Tempest. I might want to even consider canceling that plus three attack because he needs all the money he can get to get these units out. It's even supply blocked on his second Tempest. Now it's the supply block is over at least. Immortal hey, drop. Here's that Immortal Drop, but uh, will be cleaned up pretty easily. That Phoenix somehow coming into effect here. This is nasty, man. Deer takes a huge lead here. And he just missed his window, and now he's trying to, he's trying to do too much by rushing these Tempests out. And his uh, third base was so late. Deer's in a great spot. One Tempest is out here, and it does do a ton of damage. Is he actually just going to walk up the ramp? I oh guess so. There's not that much God. range damage, and he didn't get his Archons into position. He let him walk up the ramp. Okay, there they come the Archons to the front. Now he has to leave, and that Tempest is whittling away at these Colossi, but so many probes have gone down here, and they continue to do so. 26 Harvesters down. Even a Hallucinated Colossus and a great Ooh, Time Warp. Yeah, that Time Warp is just so good. Allows all those Zealots to catch up as well. He's just sieging at this natural now while uh, he's just mining off three bases pretty easily here. Looks like Patience will be able to slowly push this out. No, not quite. We got some reinforcements in here, Yeah, and Patience will go down. The targeting here for Patience is basically perfect. He's, like, targeting his Nexus Cannon and his Tempest on the same Colossus while his Tempest is down to, like, 10 health. But it still doesn't matter. This is a numbers game that he can't win. And he has DTs now killing his stuff where he doesn't have an Observer. And we're going to have a 1-1. GG. I feel like every single one of these series is going to win a game number five, Valdez. Yeah, man. Uh, we were talking about it, actually, after the end of game, or rather match number two, where we were saying this one is probably going to go to game five as well. Uh, just very back and forth right from the get-go. No 2-0 leads here. Yeah. Uh, just trying to do too much. Trying to hit a, a timing that, that missed his window. He was too timid to use his immortals. He, just, he was just too afraid to attack, and then he was like, well, I've got him in such a defensive stance. I can probably have enough time to get Tempest out, but Deer knew that he missed that window, and he knew his third base was up faster, and he had a ton of gateways that he himself added to do a counterattack. And because Patience was playing 